I wish we really had fighters and people who were consistent in Washington, D.C. But alas, we don't. And before a near empty parliament in the United Kingdom, George Galloway. George Galloway speaks to, well, an empty parliament about the war in Ukraine, the war in Gaza. And we need to have people talk about and understand just how crazy these wars are. And George Galloway is one of the few dauntless few that's addressing it. And before an empty parliament, George Galloway speaks. And I wish we had somebody like George Galloway, someone of their caliber. And people might say, well, don't we have Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders is a nutless wonder and a cuck. Okay? He is not the person that uh, people thought he was. So here we are before an empty parliament. George Galloway speaks. Madam Deputy Speaker, I congratulate my successor as the Member of Parliament for the most educated place in Britain. It was once said that the Glasgow Hillhead constituency had the highest pro rata subscription rate to the new statesman of any constituency <laughs> in the land. And he showed it in the erudition, albeit of an rather ruritarian state of affairs uh, in his contribution. And I'm grateful to him for tabling this and for giving me time that might otherwise have been appropriated by him uh, to make this contribution. Some chicken, some neck, as Mr. Churchill famously said. To paraphrase Mr. Churchill, some Secretary of State, some time. This is not comparable to Peter Mandelson being the business secretary in the House of Lords. This is a time of great international peril, where foreign affairs is undoubtedly the biggest single item in our inboxes. Must be true. There are millions on the streets. Well, it's certainly true of my inbox. There are millions on the streets about Britain's foreign policy. There are demonstrations daily, weekly, all over the country. People are seized of our role in international affairs in a way that, for someone like me, there can't be many members in the House who have participated in more foreign policy issues from the 1980s until now. I have never known a time like it when our people were so occupied, indeed many preoccupied, by our role in the world. And what I'm about to say is in no sense disrespect for the current occupant of the Foreign Secretary ship. Quite the contrary. He is a big improvement on his predecessor. He's a cut above his likely successor. I don't demur at all from the idea that Lord Cameron is a skilled international diplomat. Our problem is, as a country, who are forever lecturing other people on the quality of their democracy, now have an unelected head of state. And He's talking about that prime minister, the same prime minister that was so triggered and so upset that George Galloway won his election, that he systematically went after him, took, did a press conference and drop his name and say, this man is a threat, even though the difference between the prime minister of Great Britain and George Galloway is. George Galloway got elected to his office. That prime minister, so sinister, was selected. Like what I did there? An unelected prime minister and an unelected foreign secretary, the second most important piece on the treasury bench. And that's ruritarian. It's actually rather absurd if you start to consider it. As the Honourable Gentleman for Glasgow North was adumbrating the possible outcomes of a lectern being erected, just at that white line there, so that we could all, and the microphones would need to be adjusted, face that way, instead of Madam Deputy Speaker facing towards you. That's ridiculous. 
If there was a will, there would be a way. The silence from the government in response to the procedure committees beseeching of them to find their solution to this is eloquent, as such lengthy silences always are. We have a situation where daily, if not hourly, new and dramatic foreign policy developments are occurring. Just this day, for example, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced that this port that's being built in Gaza. Now, let's talk about this port. Remember, we have a lot of people, a lot of people saying that this port is there to deliver aid and food. Well, folks, the, the only way that's ever going to be constructed is if Israel gives a thumbs up. But also, that port is shockingly and surprisingly close to a area which, my God, no coincidence whatsoever, out of the blue, hey, there's oil there. Well, we better build this pier there, N not, not for the oil, but for food. I mean, it's not suspicious at all. Let's, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. Gosh darn it, you awful man. I can't believe I'm subscribed to this channel. They're trying to give, give food, food, medicine, aid. Just because that pier is close to where that oil's at or in the proximity of it doesn't mean they're going to build like an oil rig there or, you know, start occupying it. Shame on you. Shame on you, you awful man. I type two now, man. They're there for the oil. Okay? They're there for the oil, dude. They're there for the oil. I wonder how many twos we'll get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. With the rubble of the homes destroyed in the bombing, including the skulls and the bones of the people destroyed with the houses and lying. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's something that's new, too. Um, I won't be able to play the video, but I'll show uh, the tweet of Max Blumasol, uh, where like they're, they're actually using the rubble from the homes to actually start building a, a port over there. So that means if there's human remains there, that port is literally b being built with the bodies and the remains of the Palestinian people who could not escape. That's a bloody port right there. A bloody pier. I thought we were a civilized nation. I thought I thought we got the point of civilization, but nope. Nope. Man's in humanity demand still continues on. And just in case you missed it, let's do a little YouTube rewind and hit that rewind button just so you, all of you can hear it again. Where daily, if not hourly, new and dramatic foreign policy developments are occurring. Just this day, for example, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced that this port that's being built in Gaza with the rubble of the homes destroyed in the bombing, including the skulls and the bones of the people destroyed with the houses and lying unburied under the rubble, that according to Netanyahu, this port is being built for the deportation of millions of Palestinians from the territory, an act of ethnic cleansing of the foulest kind. We would have expected a statement from the Foreign Secretary in the light of such a dramatic development. But statement came there none and could come there none. His able deputy, and I share the honorable gentleman's feelings, for the Minister of State. A fine man. I've now, real quick here, I won't be able to play because there's going to be some copyright music being played in here. But I want to show it to you. This is from Max Blumenthal. How much genocidal bio waste, shards of uh, civilians' bones, is contained in the rubble of those homes stolen by Jose Andreas uh, for his port? Because remember, I want to just pull this up right here so all of you can see it. U.S. State Department asset Jose Andreas in his, and his World Central Kitchen are building a makeshift aid dock in northern Gaza from the rubble of destroyed Palestinian homes, all in coordination with the Israeli military. So, you know, they're delivering food and aid, which on paper looks great. Looks great. It does. It truly does. And, 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 you're, and, you're, seeing, and you're seeing people, you know, work hard, you know, they're, 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 they're trying to really do everything they can. I, I can't play it because well, I'll be able to play like a little bit of it just, just was muted, but 
you know, because <clears throat> because music will be, be being playing and then, you know, the video gets struck down. But here. Uh, I think eventually we could fast forward right here. Where we talk about, let's go ahead and pull that up here. Let me just go ahead and see if we could fast forward to the point to where they're talking about the aid that's being delivered. All that, all that food. Okay, so they're going to unload the cargo, right? See, now hold on. All of you might be able to see it. So they're building. They're working through the night. Working through the night. Right? Many boats are going to Gaza. We're going to work all day today through the night. See, they, they don't know if they get the boat in properly on time. Where, where are they getting that material? Where are they getting that material from? Where do you think they're getting the material from? Hmm? To do so out of rubble. Out of rubble from the homes. Yeah. From both homes. So you could see this. So I hope all of you could see it there. Yep. Oh, there you go. So let's go back to George Galloway. Let's rewind that right here. New and dramatic foreign policy developments are occurring. Just this day, for example. Prime Minister Netanyahu announced that this port that's being built in Gaza with the rubble of the homes destroyed in the bombing, including the skulls and the bones of the people destroyed with the houses and lying unburied under the rubble, that according to Netanyahu, this port is being built for the deportation of millions of Palestinians from the territory an act of ethnic cleansing of the foulest kind. We would have expected a statement from the Foreign Secretary in the light of such a dramatic development. But statement came there none and could come there none. His able deputy, and I share the Honourable Gentleman's feelings for the Minister of State, a fine man, I've known him a very long time, he cannot possibly cope with all of this workload as... Now, uh, Richie Dupe on Rumble says, where will the millions of refugees go? I don't know. That's a very good question. 80, 70 to probably 80% of Gaza is now a moonscape. I've talked about this before. Due dissidents have talked about this. INN, everybody's talked about it. I, I have no idea what reconstruction looks like, and that's the point. Israel bombed Gaza so bad, I cannot sit here. I don't think anybody on any social media platform, any kind of media platform, no matter where they stand politically, can look their audience in the eye and say, oh, yeah, Gaza will be able to reconstruct. Not after this bombing. Now, this is the end-all, be-all bombing. And Netanyahu made it very clear. Made it very clear. He wants he's he's going to ignore what the international community says. He's going to ignore what President Biden says. He's going to continue his military uh, uh, operations in Rafa. So, as for your question, Richie, I don't know, but Israel is making it clear that it's not their problem. It's not their problem at all. They're not going to leave Gaza. They're not going to do it, and our politicians won't say it. Say a thing. Now, AOC will say, well, those shame on those 109 Republican lawmakers. But don't forget the Democratic lawmakers, too, that are bought by APAC because everyone wants that sweet APAC money. The one color that everybody can rally around. Green. That green dollar. Effectively, Lord Cameron's deputy in here, his vicar on earth in here. But even if he could, he still would not be the foreign secretary. We cannot continue to be a democratic country. We cannot continue. Uh, of course. Yeah, I, I, the, uh, I, sorry, of course. I want to be brief because it is very unusual to come in after an adjournment debate has started and then into. Okay, well. <laughs> hey, it's democracy. Hey, how dare you speak in an empty parliament you building? <laughs> Obviously, there's rules and procedures, but I mean, come on. It's empty. 
It's empty. You, you, you could bend and twisty twist the rules just a tiny sort of little bit. To be. Um, and it is important that everybody who does intervene stays to the end as well. Stephen. Very speaker, and thank you for that uh, strict reminder. Uh, does the honourable gentleman agree that if, if he or I was to secure an urgent question, it, the, the same principle would be would, would apply? The foreign secretary would not be here. Indeed, cannot be here for reasons which are what about architecture? Kindly guide me with your eyebrows as you normally do, Madam Deputy Speaker. If I am going on too long, I'm not entirely sure about the timings. Uh, of all of this. But as a matter of architecture, for a democratic chamber to be bereft of the presence of its principal diplomat, the country's principal diplomat, at a time of massive international tension, is completely absurd. Madam Deputy Speaker, for those of us on this day, on this day in 2003, our country went off to the most disastrous war that we fought for well over a hundred years. Hmm. Now, what war was that? Something happened in 2003. Obviously, in 2001, there was the conflict in Afghanistan. 2003, heaven forbid that the whole world would just allow an invasion to happen in a country where supposedly there were WMDs, and I hope we found them. Did we ever find those weapons of mass destruction? Because, look, maybe I'm overstepping my boundaries. Maybe maybe I might trigger some of you. Maybe this might cause a lot of you to unsubscribe from my channel. But I'm just going to speak for myself and my opinion. All right? And all of you across the political spectrum, my wonderful, beautiful audience, you know, m maybe this is just me. Isn't it kind of important that, you know, when you say there's weapons of mass destruction, shouldn't we find those? They shouldn't be just lying around and we're like, you know, out there in the blue. Or or, or maybe I'm wrong. Just be like, ah, kid, just relax. Don't think about it. Weapons of mass destruction. Shush. Come on. You're overthinking it, buddy. You, you worry too much. You do too much. You're not Batman after all. You're not Spider-Man. Come on. Take it easy, buddy. Relax. Relax. It was a disastrous decision. But at least it was a decision that the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary of the day were ready to and had to defend each and every single day. The debates, not many of us here now were involved in them, except thee and me. These debates were of the fiercest and most urgent kind. But we may be on the brink of World War III, Madam Deputy Speaker. Little the sequel that we've all been waiting for. Macron may be about to march his legionnaires into Odessa, creating the gravest international crisis since the Second World War. And we will not be able to question our foreign secretary about it. We'll have to wait for the morning editions uh, to learn what the government intends to do about it. War in Ukraine, war in Gaza, maybe war against Iran, war in the Red Sea, war everywhere. Foreign Secretary, nowhere. Nowhere at least that he can be questioned by the people in this country who are elected to question him. That's the point, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is our duty to hold ministers to account. But by definition, in this situation, we cannot hold the, the occupant. We talk about great offices of state at such a period of high tension. There can be no doubt that the second most important office of state in Britain today is the foreign secretary. But he is out with our reach. We, we can't even, as we once did, rub shoulders with them in the division lobby can't do that can't do that now because now there's a whole new system so while we're on the brink of world war three war in ukraine war uh, uh the, the genocide is taking place in gaza potential war with taiwan he forgot to mention that but hey, you know what no one's perfect there you go hey there's there's that sable rattling in taiwan war in the red sea war with iran war everywhere 
How to get to this? Worst timeline ever. War everywhere. And by the way, you know, all these nukes, they're pointing at major metropolitan cities. And if someone is dumb enough to push that shiny red button, that's it. Like, most of us are probably going to be vaporized. The survivors will envy the dead. And if there's any human beings left, we will be a shell of what we once were. No way will we ever get to this point of technology ever again because the planet will be damaged. All the resources dug up to get us where we need to do will be gone already. We will be a pathetic species. All because we have a bunch of sociopaths that want to earn that shiny red penny, that extra green dollar for forever future wars. We can't even see him in the members' tea room. We can't bump into him in the corridor here. We cannot in any way impress upon him that millions upon millions of our fellow citizens and our constituents have this or that concern, point of view on the great issues uh, of the day. This is untenable, Madam Deputy Speaker. I am seeking to inject some note of urgency and passion into this because it is an untenable situation. I wish that from amongst the members opposite, it had been possible to find one capable of being the foreign secretary. Would have been much easier and this debate would not be happening. That was not so. None of them were up to the job. It's therefore incumbent immediately for the government to bring forward a solution whereby we are able to look in the eyes of the second most important uh, politician in the state and press upon him the political preoccupations that occupy the concerns of millions of us. You will never see Bernie Sanders or AOC talk like that. You will never see any Democratic lawmaker talk like that. You will never see anyone with any kind of power or position of authority talk like that here in the United States. There's only a handful of people that are kind of raising the alarm about endless forever future wars and the potential of us leading to World War III. But, hey, we got the jackboot of censorship marching our way. We got our Supreme Court and our politicians on the super fast rush to silence us. And this is a huge concern because... Since the war of terror began way back in 2001, we have been on this pathway for absolute destruction. And the United States and its allies, you know, we say we're there for freedom, but we're there for the oil. And now what? We're instigating fights between with two other major global superpowers? Where is the voice of reason, especially here in the United States? But where are the voices of reason all over the world? It has to be the people. The politicians won't save us. And I got to give a huge shout out to George Galloway. At least he's consistent. However, however, he can't do this alone. No one can. I'm pretty sure all of us, no matter where we are in the world, we don't want to see our lives vaporized by, you know, the big old nukes and their mushroom clouds in the sky. We don't want to see that. It doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to destroy each other. And we don't have to let these sociopaths rule over us while they hide in their bunkers, allowing us to be vaporized because of their greed. These politicians ruling over us are not serious people. They're disturbed individuals with visions of grandeur, and all what they care about is profit and money. Profits, money, ambition, and power. That's all what they care about. You and everyone in the world needs to realize that our politicians aren't lifting a finger to stop these forever wars. It's up to us.